Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Joni Ogg, and on behalf of TravelProfessionalNews.com, HomeBasedTravelAgent.com, and FindAHostTravelAgency.com, I want to welcome you all to today's webinar, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to be with us. Our host is one of our faves, Travel Planners International. Joining us is wonderful Jen Lee. She's the straightforward and energetic force in the travel industry. So Jen isn't shy, as and some of you know her and have attended her webinars before, you know she's not shy, which is a really good thing, but she's got an obsession with guiding travel advisors des desiring to build their empires, no matter the size. So with a focus on motivating others to liberate their businesses and depart from what they know to be true and real, Jen's advice is always, always spot on and relevant. I always look forward to her webinars. When she's not working, you're going to find her cheering on. Now, I say this wrong every time because I do. Yes, I, you do. So I do. This so I'm going to say it right tech. today. Cheering on Bama. Is that right? That's right. Yay, I did it right. Bama football and playing with her grandchild, Eliza, <laughs> and enjoying life with friends and a glass of Pinot Grigio or two. So mm -hmm. today's webinar topic is 20 foundational pieces for your travel business. This is really going to be a cool webinar. And two very lucky attendees are going to win 30-minute consultations with Jen. So be sure to listen really carefully for your chance to win, and we'll have those questions at the end of the presentation. And just remember that you're muted, but we do welcome your questions at any time. And Jen is a very interactive speaker, so be sure you put those questions in, and then I'll get to them with her as, whenever she's ready for them. You can type in your questions anytime in the question area that you see on the right-hand panel of your screen. And when the presentation is all over, we're going to take as many questions as we can, and then we'll be asking for comments along the way as well. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to my friend Jen so she can get started. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, Miss Joni. Hi, everybody. Uh, Joni, can you believe we're in September already of 2021? I know it's bizarre, right? I know. It's totally bizarre. But, Almost um, Halloween. Oh, my God. I know. I just want the weather to uh, reflect the same thing. I'm here in Orlando, Florida, where it's warm. I'm ready for some cool weather. Me but, too. But, you know, I know. So, hey, welcome, everybody. So good to see you. Now, uh, Joni sent out, uh, Joni and the team sent out a reminder email about an hour before the webinar. We're not sure if this little link worked or not. But Joni, do you want to show them where to find like this little um, JPEG, this puzzle that I, I sent out? Are they able to look at it in um, the handouts? Hey, Sandy, I see you're on here. Can you tell me if you got that, if you're able to see that? Okay, so I had a couple people respond. Thank you, Vicki. Vicki said, got the puzzle. Excellent. All right. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, all all got right, it. So, oh, yeah. Awesome. Good, good, good. Now, it's not that I want you to really walk away from your computer right now as we're going through this, but if you're listening to this uh, later on, make sure that you click the link and you download this puzzle because this will help you as we start reviewing uh, the foundational pieces of your travel business. Now, uh, if anyone who's listened to my webinars before, you know I am I'm obsessed with you people, absolutely obsessed with y'all being um, strong and profitable business owners. And I had a realization, actually it was more of a revelation, um, just occurred a couple of months ago at one of our TPI events. Um, at TPI, we try to put on uh, different types of events, and one of them we put on was called Building Your Legacy. And the whole um, design of the event at the end of the two and a half days was for each advisor to be able to answer the question, what will my business look like in three to five years? And so that was our goal, right? So one of the exercises, which quite frankly, I thought was a fun exercise, but I didn't realize how revealing this was going to be, was we called it like filling in the gaps. And basically, we came up with 20 things that we think every, every business that wants to have a legacy of some sort, any business that's going to move forward in it or even close down after a few years, every business needs to have these foundational pieces. And so we challenged uh, the advisors that were in attendance to um, write each one of these down on little puzzle pieces. And we're going to do that together today. So I'm going to go to the next screen. Um, oops, I do this every single time. Hang on. There we go. So if you were to imagine that you had a jigsaw puzzle and there was 20 different pieces in it, what we did in our event is we gave out actual jigsaw puzzles that looked like this. They were pretty good size. And we told them to take each piece apart. Then we had them mix all the pieces up 
And as we went through the 20 pieces of things that we think are part of a foundational business, we told them to write each one, each one individually on those pieces. And then at the end, we challenged them to pull out the pieces um, that they actually had already in place. And as we go through this, you'll see what I'm saying. So we said, all right, now pull out the pieces that you already have in place. Now, Joni, in this event, we had people who had been in the business for 25 and 30 years, very successful agency owners, advisors, solopreneurs, as well as those that had teams. So I'm thinking, ah, there's going to be a handful of things that might be some aha moments. I knew in the class we were going to have some people that were fairly new, maybe jumped in about four years ago when things were like hopping, and we wanted them to slow down to make sure they had their foundation set. So with that being said, we then asked them to take those pieces and try to put the puzzle together with what was what they had in place. Hmm. And can you imagine wow. my surprise? Very different, right? Between the people yeah. that had the years of experience and then the ones that were relatively new. It had to be really right. interesting. Right. But here's what happened. And this was the shocker. What happened was even those advisors that had been, been in business a long time, couldn't put their puzzle together enough to actually show it as a puzzle. They had a piece over here, a piece over there. They had something in the middle, but they had nothing connecting it. Wow. So what it said to me was, holy guacamole, which is one of my favorite sayings, holy guacamole, there must be so many other agency owners and advisors, whether they've launched their business recently or have been in business for a while, that are missing some of these foundational pieces. And so now I've been kind of on a mission to um, educate as many people as possible. So you guys are the very first people that I'm actually talking about this with. I am also just did a podcast uh, recording, which hasn't aired yet, about this as well. And I'm, at the end of this, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of other resources to help you fill in this puzzle. But it'll be interesting. So if you guys, if you've printed this off, it'll be interesting if you write on each of the puzzle piece. If afterwards, maybe you highlight those things that you have in place, and maybe you'll see from there what you're still missing. Because the idea behind this is to fill in the gaps. What, what the heck do I still need? So how does that sound? Fun, actually. <laughs> I'm all about the creative. Like, I love anything with crayon. Oh, and I so, love puzzles. Anyway. So I'm a, I'm a, I just absolutely love jigsaw puzzles. So I'm, you know. Absolutely. This, is, this looks yeah. fun to me. Yeah, and guys, if you have a team of advisors, um, you can actually order this 20 but this 20 piece puzzle p uh, set on Amazon and I guess I should add that to my resources and then do it together with your team or as you're bringing new people on okay are you ready to get down to it ready okay and everybody I want you to type in and you know Joni has permission to interrupt me if in the middle you've got questions or clarifications or I love it when people challenge me on something that's actually my favorite thing okay here we go so the basics we're going to we're going to talk about the 20. So the first first are becoming a business. Just the basics people. Number 1, you have to establish what kind of business structure you want your business to mean to be. And what I mean by that is are you going to be an LLC? Are you going to operate as a DBA? Are you going to be an S corp? So many of the advisors that I run across are still paying themselves under their social security number. Maybe they've never even established themselves as a business. So the very first thing you have to do is determine what business structure do you want your business to be. And a lot of the answer to that is going to be um, once you talk to your accountant, right? So your accountant or a CPA will help you in, in making the right decision financially as well as um, legally for your setup. So number one, create a business structure. So I'll be curious how many people are not operating as a DBA, as an LLC, or as an S-Corp. And Joni, by all means, jump in anytime you like. Yeah, I will. Number two is obtaining a local and state business license. Now, a lot of people, is it required? Well, I'm sure it is because every government wants to collect some money from you. They're usually only $35 or maybe $125. But what I find is, is that once you've created a business structure and you've kind of launched your business and you then take out a business license in your local county or in your state or even in your city, depending on where you live, now all of a sudden everybody can see you in the business's directory. Now, why is that important? Well, yes, you're going to get a lot of junk mail, but you're also going to be um, out there. You're no longer this 
advisor that's sitting at home who books travel, because you know I can't stand that type of uh, vernacular for you guys, you are an actual business that you have launched. So take out a business license and keep it up to date. Number three, grab E&O or liability insurance. Now we're a host agency at TPI, and of course we're like many host agencies. We offer E&O insurance is built into uh, your fees with us. However, we do recommend to our advisors to take out their own liability insurance. You should not rely on your host agency's uh, E&O. Uh, chances are it has a big $15,000 deductible, which you know just means it's really not not that really useful. I mean, it's useful in the big stuff, but in some of the smaller stuff, you want to take out your own liability insurance. That is one of the, I, no comments from anybody else, but I love that because that's so important. That's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just double, double insure, you know, make sure mm -hmm. you have insurance for yourself. Don't rely on the host because, you know, again, while they may have it, you're right. If you get a number of claims that could have a big impact on you getting you know, years covered. So great, great advice, great advice. And it also, it also puts you in that mindset and eases your mind a little bit as well totally. that, Hey, I'm a business and I'm protecting myself. Right. Yeah. The fourth thing is to open a business bank account. I know this sounds so basic, but Joni, the number of advisors that commingle their business and their, like their commission in with their personal bank account, it blows my mind. Literally so scares me to, to death. <laughs> it does. You have to open your own business bank account. You want to keep that money separate. Again, this is setting you up not only mentally, but also strategically as an actual business. So often advisors view themselves as travel advisors, which is a whole nother soapbox that I could uh, stand on. And yes, you are travel advisors, but you're first and foremost a business owner. So if somebody asks you, what is it that you do? Um, the very first thing that should come out of your mouth is I own a travel agency, unless you work for a travel agency and you're an actual employee. But if you're under that independent contractor agreement with anybody, you own your own travel agency. So understanding what your business structure is, that's a DBA, an LLC, an S Corp. Number two is a business license. Take out your local business license. Number three is liability insurance. And number four is open a business bank account. And the fifth thing is, and this is going to be really huge at TPI here soon, everyone needs to join ASTA and or CLIA to become a true agency. You've got to be part of your trade association. And I'm a big believer in both of these organizations. ASTA is the only organization that their sole um, lot in life is to protect and promote the travel agency uh, and travel advisor community. And CLIA is designed to help with the cruise lines as well as train you on cruise lines and help you with um, selling cruises. What do you say about that, Ms. Joni? I, gr I totally agree, but I'm got, I've got a question for you from someone. So sure I got to sure. go back up just a tiny bit. And no it's back to the E&L. Um, yeah. They're saying, do you, and I'm, I'm assuming that they're asking about TPI. So I'll let you answer that. Mm -hmm. Do you charge for E&O and what are your associated reps? Um, what is the charge for them, your independent agents? So I don't know if you want to share that now or if you want to reach out to this person later, but I just want to give you that opportunity. So uh, for TPI, I'll answer that specifically, but get with your host agency. With TPI, E&O insurance is included in your fees. So to, your fees are based on the um, commission percentage uh, split that you agree to with TPI. And so, you know, you can email me and I'll be happy to connect with you on that. But E&O insurance in most host agencies, I would think is included. Okay, perfect. Um, also, somebody else is actually is asking this question, and this might have to do, I don't know exactly where Randy's located, but he's asking mm -hmm. about IATA, IATA and mm -hmm. membership in IATA. And honestly, I, you know, a lot of it has to do with, you know, if you're international and you're, you know, a little bit more mm -hmm. so than when we talk about Astra or CLIA, and it's a different type of an association entirely um, than CLIA yeah. or Asta. but I, what are your thoughts on that? He's in Louisiana. Yeah. Hey, um, what was his name? Frank? Randy. 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 Oh my God. How did I forget? That's my husband's name. <laughs> hey, Randy. That's scary. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Um, so, um, so Randy, your IATAN card, I think you might be referencing, um, is something that you can get through your host agency or straight from IATA. It is after you have uh, produced more than, I believe it's $5,000 in a year in commissions. 
The IATAN card is great to use with regards to um, proving that you are a travel advisor uh, when you go to check into hotels or you're trying to get any kind of a discount. I'm sure there's other reasons to have it. Um, but again, if you're part of a host agency, you can get that IATAN card through your host agency. There's usually like a $35 fee for that. Okay. I would not say that's a business basic, but you know what? And, and thank you, Randy, for bringing this up. I'm going to share with you the 20. There's probably 100 things that um, could become a business basic or that you should have in place. These 20 that I'm going to share with you guys are the ones that I think have a good combination between um, you know, business oriented, well, you'll see, and you know, marketing and some of the other things. But if you can nail these 20, you've got a good solid foundation to sell your business later on, a solid foundation to actually buy somebody else's business, a solid foundation for you to be able to sleep well at night, a solid foundation for you to feel and act like a true business owner, which is one of the things that I am super, super passionate about. Um, and that's really where the longevity of our industry will come from, guys, is when we all change our mindset and our own personal perception of what role you play uh, in the industry and also within your clients' lives. And again, another soapbox moment that uh, okay, so back up on many of my webinars. Yes. One more second. So Randy's asking this as a, a different way of asking the question. So that we'll answer this sure. and then we'll move on. Um, he's asking mm -hmm. if I have if he should join ASTA and or CLIA mm -hmm. if he already belongs to IATA. Again, they're different yes. memberships yes. with different benefits. 100%. So let's talk about it for just a second. And guys, um, I'm actually getting ready to do a podcast. One of my resources that I'm going to share with you at the end of this um, is a podcast that I'm going to be doing and that this particular podcast will come out in a couple of weeks. But um, ASTA is the American Society of Travel Advisor. This is our industry association. The only thing ASTA focuses on is the protection on Capitol Hill to make sure um, that Travel agencies and travel advisors are not taxed inappropriately, are not held to standards that are not appropriate for us as independent contractors and individual business owners. Um, they also um, are the sole association that promotes the use of using a travel advisor. So you know how we all walk around saying, you know, we wish we could elevate the profession of the industry. Well, out of the 40,000 travel advisors in the United States, only 4,000 belong to ASTA, and that's just a crying shame. And the ASTA memberships bring you, yes, they bring you some benefits, but this is really about you maintaining your professionalism. So ASTA is about, it's kind of like if you're a realtor, you belong to the Realtors Association. Um, if you're a lawyer, you belong to the Lawyers Association. It's the same thing. Think about any other industry out there. It's the protection and the promotion of um, travel advisors. CLIA is the Cruise Line Industry Association which they're really there to um, help from a maritime standpoint. They're there to support all the needs that are centered around anything that's on the water, whether it be river cruises or ocean cruises. Um, now, they are also for the advisor, and they have a lot of great training within CLIA that helps those advisors that want to focus on selling cruises as their business. Uh, CLIA is absolutely fantastic. Many of our advisors belong to both. One is to promote and protect that from an advisor and agency standpoint. We're the ones that go up on the Capitol Hill, um, uh, raising money for ASAPAC so that we can, you know, unfortunately it's a dirty business being in, in Washington, DC. You gotta, you gotta pay to play, you gotta pay for attention. That's what ASTA does on behalf of all of you guys. And then CLIA uh, does the same thing from a cruise line perspective, but also serves the advisor. IATA is more of a, um, a, not a certification, but kind of a designation. I hope that answers that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, good deal. All right, so let's move on. So that's becoming a business. Here are the five basics I think you should have. The next set of um, foundational uh, things that I think you should have are your branding basics. Now, I, I hope you uh, agree with me on some of these, Joni. The first one is when you launch a travel agency, right, or you become a travel advisor, you need to get a web domain, people. You need to buy the URL. It's $7.99, $8.99 a year. Whether you ever launch a robust, what, what robust website or not, to be legitimized, to be able to use many of the features in Facebook and LinkedIn, um, 
on Google, you know, find my Google business, even getting a, um, an email address that looks professional, you need to have a web domain. So everyone should buy their web domain, whether it be Susie's Travels or, you know, Travels in Wisconsin or Wisconsinites that love to travel, whatever it is, buy a web domain. Were you going to say something? No. Not at all. Okay. You're absolutely okay. right. I, I was going to say, though, I was going to throw this out. I don't know if we have time for this, but sure. somebody asked me the other day the same question. So I'll throw it. kind of goes along with this. Would they be better off going with a dot .com or if they would be better off going with dot .travel? Because we know that that's an extension. I go with dot .com always because I think if, that's what if, people are going to type in, period. So that's my, are. but I don't know about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dot .com. Listen, if it's, if it's bo if both are available by both. Exactly. Yep. But, There's just no reason not to. Dot com. Definitely dot com. Um, and try not to make it so weird, not with like a lot of dashes in it and stuff like that. Um, because as Joni just said, people are just Googling it. I Google it all the time, right? I Google somebody's name, a company name, and you got to be careful because somebody may have hijacked your company name um, because maybe it's a really good company name. They may have hijacked it and they've actually put Google ads to that. And all of a sudden, because you have a hyphen in yours or because uh, you don't have one, all of a sudden they're finding somebody else. So one of the first things I would do if I were an advisor listening to this webinar is I'd Google myself or have a friend of mine Google me and see what comes up. So, but have a good strong web domain. The seventh is have a professional email address. And I mean a professional email address, not just for your clients, but also when you're communicating with travel partners and through your host agency or your consortia, um, you need a professional email address. You cannot walk around and say you are a legitimate business owner that understands what's happening in today if your email address is jenlovestravel at yahoo.com. <laughs> it's just not going to happen, people. First off, everyone goes yahoo as soon as you say it. And that and Hotmail as well, you know, um, 1982 called and they want their email address back. So you cannot have Hotmail, you cannot have Yahoo. People, uh, the most professional ones would either be with your web web domain, right? So let's just say it's Joni's Travel is the name of your company and you own Joni'sTravels.com. Chances are through GoDaddy or any of most of these uh, uh, web domain companies, you can get up to five email addresses. So you, you can do Joni at Joni's Travel, or you could do sales at Joni's Travel, or you could do um, setup travel at Joni's Travel, whatever it is, do that. If you don't want to do a web domain for whatever reason, use a Gmail address. At the very least, people, use a Gmail address. That will help you from a Google standpoint as well, if you've got a Google account. Now, there's two email addresses that I suggest. So, so many, Joni, so here's what's happened. A lot of our advisors have email addresses that are just attached to communicating with TPI, or they might be just attached to communicating with a travel partner, which is different than communicating with their clients. I can't tell you how embarrassing some of these email addresses are. You know, it might be somebody's initials, one, two, three, four at yahoo.com. And they're like, yeah, I set it up because then I know all of my email coming from TPI um, goes into this one mailbox. Well, guess what? Sometimes if you're emailing myself um, or your host agency with a challenge that you have with a partner, I'm forwarding that and I'm like, get a hold of, you know, Renee, you know, Renee's one, two, three, four um, at cfl.rr.com. It, it just does not come across as professional. And I bring this up because many of my platinum advisors, our top advisors, have these types of emails. And I'm just like, guys, you do not come across as professional to that travel partner because it looks like you're old, um, that you haven't changed your email or that you don't have a brand behind you. So I'm just trying to elevate the professionalism within your business to set you up for that three to five years down the road. What do you want your business to look like? Phew, okay. I'm doing a lot of talking. I know. I've got a question for you, though. Um, someone bad. says they have a professional email with their agency, okay? And mm -hmm. they, they do work um, as an independent contractor with a 1099. Do you suggest mm -hmm. that I get an extra branding, get extra branding and get my own web domain? If so, under what? So I'm going to say yes, but that's me. Yeah. Yes. So um, I'm not sure the relationship that you have with if this is 
you're an associate advisor with an advisor that's under a host or if you're a franchise, I'm not sure what that is. Um, but whenever you can launch your own business and you can bring that business name all throughout all of these foundational pieces, and we're only on number eight, but if you can bring it all throughout that, including your email address, my answer would be yes. Okay. But feel free at the end, I'm going to share my email address. Feel free to email me. I'm happy to chat with you offline. Number eight in the branding basics, guys, is consistent messaging. And I got to tell you, I suffered from this big time as a consultant, a business consultant. I would get super excited about something. I would really nail my client. Oh, you know what? I'm going to change the way I say this because I listened to a podcast or something. And I'd update it on my website, but I'd forget to update it on my LinkedIn. Or I didn't update it on my Facebook. Um, or maybe it wasn't in my contract that I was sending out there any longer. So maybe every three months, give yourself um, 30 minutes to go through and check all of these consumer facing outward bound pieces of messages and make sure your messaging is consistent across the board. As an example, when we went from travel agent to travel advisor, um, we had to make sure all throughout all of our stuff, it was consistent as travel advisor versus travel agent. Now, unfortunately on travelplanners.com, travelplannersinternational.com, it still says agent because from an SEO's perspective, we had to do that, but you'll see the word um, advisor in there as well. So make sure your messaging is consistent across the board. I know this seems basic, but guess what? Not necessarily. We need to be reminded too. Is not necessarily yeah. that, that it is basic as we forget, you know, things mm -hmm. and at least I do at least my age, I forget a lot, but for sure it's help, <laughs> helpful to be reminded. Yep. Um, number nine, know your customer. Again, this is part of the basics in branding is really understand who is it that you want to serve, right? And how do you want to serve them? And then understand your customer. What are their likes? What are their dislikes? What are their pain points? And then that kind of goes back into that consistent messaging as well and ensuring that you're talking to your customer the way that they want to be spoken to. Um, and really that starts with understanding who you want to serve. Now, one of the things that I have to kind of pause here and say is this is gonna change. So let's just say someone who's listening, um, they're launching their business and they're, they're going out and they're saying, I wanna serve multi-generational families because I feel like I'm pa passionate about families staying together. You've got a good passion, a good why behind it. You go out there and you change, you put all your messaging, everything behind it. About two years from now, it's possible you're gonna change your mind. And if that, that's okay, because that's what happens with a business as you start going through your business. Um, you know, most companies go through branding changes every five to seven years of some sort. They tweak their messaging. They understand their customer more. Maybe their customer has gotten older. Maybe it's the same customer, right? But they've now gone through a different generation. Or are they wanting to maintain that same segment, that same demographic, that same psychographic, so now they have new customers. Well, new customers have different expectations, right? So a customer that, let's just say it was multi-generational family, that customer 10 years ago has completely different expectations of what today's multi-generational customer wants today. So you have to always know your customer and keep going back to the well and understanding them and refining it more and more, which will help you with your messaging. I, I, I don't know if I hear a pin drop, if people are writing. Oh, that's no, right. I can't not, hear they're not that. writing. You can't hear them writing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, if, oh, wait, okay. Okay, something happened while you were saying that. Um, <laughs> hold on. I'm, okay. I'm not sure what it means, so I'm going to ignore that one for now, and I'll take that one and give it to you later. And everybody says they're <laughs> listening, by the way. Okay. <laughs> okay, Eliza, thank you. Elisa or Eliza, thank you for saying that you are um, actually listening. That is super. <laughs> because thank you. It's we think Eliza you are, but you know, when you do webinars, you know, you really don't know what's going on out there at everybody's I house. Know, you know? So that's I awesome. Know. Thank you for that confirmation. <laughs> Go ahead. Jen. You know, I've got a, a fragile ego, so I really need people to tell me if they're listening. Okay. Let's go on to the next section, which are professional services. And I gosh, this could be a whole bunch of different professional services, but the basics, basics are some of the things that I want to highlight um, right here. Number one, you need to have an attorney resource of some sort. 
Now, if you are a member of ASTA, you get a free attorney resource uh, through Peter Labasso for quick questions. And then they also have attorney resources that are not really very expensive for you to reach out to them. Through ASTA, they also have a lot of legal documents and things that you can get through ASTA. So I would use that as my attorney resource. But if not, at least have somebody that you know. They don't have to be on retainer or anything like that, but you know, talk to a travel, um, a travel attorney, or at least have one in your Rolodex, have a recommendation uh, in your Rolodex for an attorney resource. You never know when you need somebody quickly. And then the second one is you need an accountant or a bookkeeper. Now, when I owned my own business, I had a bookkeeper and I had an accountant. My bookkeeper helped me with my invoicing and you know collecting monies and making sure things were put into QuickBooks. If you're with a host agency, you've got uh, somebody who's kind of not a bookkeeper, but they're they're um, reconciling your commissions for you. Uh, but you definitely want to have someone who's going to help you uh, develop that profit and loss, that P and L, set some budgets. Uh, help you understand an accountant will help you understand what are write-offs what are not how to code those things really important when you own a business that you understand uh, your money where is it how much you're spending on certain things um, and having a professional service help you with that is very helpful I'm going to toss in just a, a thought that sometimes you can get um, the attorney that's also an accountant or an accountant that's also an attorney, which is a, a to bang for your buck sort of thing. You know, somebody that oh, really like understands that. travel as well. Um, when you talk mm -hmm. about the attorney, it's so important um, to find a resource that is focused, or does understand the travel industry, because our business is an entirely different animal than any other business out there. And totally. you'll save yourself tons of money and time um, paying for fees if they understand the basics of our business so that I definitely absolutely. recommend somebody who understands it absolutely and I'll, I'm always going to go back to ASTA as well uh, they're there to help you they've got a, a program called the verified travel advisor program which will walk you through those training classes on how to ensure that you're keeping yourself legal because there's a lot of legalness uh, in owning a travel agency no nope, I did not say in booking travel owning a travel agency which everybody has one unless they're an employee. Okay. You know, there, there used now. to be, one more mm -hmm. thing. There used to be, mm -hmm. and I'm going to recommend it, recommend her. I don't know if she's mm -hmm. still one of ASTA's recommended attorneys, so, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can check on that. But there was a gal that we used numerous times throughout the years. Her name was Rose Hatche, H-A-T-C-H-E, mm -hmm. just in Texas. I think she was in Texas. One of the nicest ladies, um, and she so got our business and didn't overcharge. I don't know if she's still doing it. She would be younger than me, so she's probably still working at it. Um, but she was awesome. So her name was Rose Hatche. So just in case any of you are listening and looking for anybody, if she's out there being recommended by ASTA, I would highly recommend you contact her. I love it. I've not heard her name before, but I don't know everything. As much as I sound <laughs> like I do, I don't know everything or everybody. All right. So next is covering your assets. And um, the next three things are really super important. And this is where we found a lot of people had uh, dropped the ball. So the first one is terms and conditions. Make sure you have a robust terms and conditions for your clients to sign, especially when it comes to that weird thing that happened in 2020 that we keep dealing with, that you know I will never use the word because I don't give it any energy, but the terms and conditions are uber important. Uh, your personal agency terms and conditions, terms and conditions with regards to accepting or denying travel insurance, um, accepting and denying uh, liability, so on and so forth. So make sure you have that. And again, I keep going back to ASTA. This is not an ASTA commercial, but it's one of the resources you got to take advantage of. Uh, they have terms and conditions that you can use. The number 13, oh, I hit this too fast, but the number 13 is a hit by a bus plan. Now, as a host agency, we deal with this often. And the hit by a bus plan that if you have it, I promise you, you will sleep better at night if you have this plan in place. But the hit by a bus plan is the plan that says, if I were to be hit by a bus, what happens to my agency? What happens to my clients? Is there a place for me? Is there a place where I have all of my logins and my passwords, obviously secure? And does somebody within my family, do I have a fellow advisor? Is there somebody who has all of that so that my clients will be well taken care of. And it could be that you get sick. It could be that you wanna go on an extended vacation. It could be you don't necessarily have to get hit by a bus, 
but what's that emergency plan? Because we get this almost, not on a daily, but probably on a weekly basis, a consumer calls TPI because they can't find their advisor, and then we find out the advisor broke their leg, or the advisor had a heart attack, or the advisor's husband had a heart attack, and they didn't have anybody else to help them, and so they're focusing on their family, which happens, but you have a business. So what is your hit by a bus plan? Yes, also, I hate to scare everybody, but you know, um, we deal with this at PATH, the Professional Association of Travel Hosts meeting. Um, there are advisors and agency owners that are getting up in age that um, may not remember certain things or may repeat certain things. We need to have a contingency plan in place. As a business owner, every business owner out there, if you don't think the owner of Starbucks or your local restaurant or anything else doesn't have a plan in place with logins, with um, some other things that we're gonna bring up, you're sorely mistaken. So you need to have a hit by a bus plan and partner. Okay, I got a hit by a bus and it's a great suggestion. Um, Laura Lee, I, I love it. Um, something that I don't think we all think about when we, you know, we think about sharing passwords and all that kind of stuff, but this was really good. She says, um, have someone else in your family um, or on your business bank account so that they can access commissions paid or deal with things if yep. you're not around. That's a really brilliant idea. So thanks for sharing mm -hmm. that. And then someone else says, is it possible to get a full coffee, copy, I can't talk today, mm -hmm. full copy mm -hmm. of a services agreement between the customer and travel advisor that clearly sets out the responsibilities? Can I get this without having to pay exorbitant fees? I'm still far in debt because of the thing we don't talk about. Thanks. <laughs> So I will tell you, ASPA has all those resources. You could also possibly um, get with your host host agency. If you're with a host agency, they may have some stuff on their um, directory and their intranet for you. Uh, but ASPA has a lot of that. Um, also, if you're part of a community, a travel advisor community, maybe just reach out to them to see if you've got a copy of it. But when in doubt, always go to some sort of lawyer. Um, but again, the ASTA membership would get it for you. And ASTA membership is like 200 bucks. It's not really expensive. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, okay. Any other That's questions? Right. No, not right now. Mm -hmm. No, we're good. And then number 14 is so many of our advisors and uh, um, agency owners are building their business through associate advisors. Some people call them sub-agents. We call them associate advisors. Make sure you have an associate advisor agreement and any third party people that you use, get it in writing. So there might be somebody who's a virtual assistant for you. Maybe you have a part-time bookkeeper. Make sure you've got an agreement and you've got the uh, scope of work and what you have agreed to in writing. Do not go off of just, hey, I've got a friend who's got a kid in college down the street who said he's gonna do this for me. Get, put it in writing. It doesn't have to be you know, anything dramatic, but always have something, um, a base of some sort uh, that you can uh, put together as an agreement. And you can even go, you can Google these types of documents. Um, I want to say like Office Depot and stuff, they have like document templates. They don't have like an associate advisor document template, but they've got some, I'm hiring um, an, uh, an IC to do something for me, not a travel advisor, but I'm hiring a 1099 person for $20, I'm sorry, for 20 hours a week. They've got, uh, just Google it, you might find something, a good baseline to go from. Okay. All right, comment. Robert, so, Robert says, just want to say, Jen Lee, you're awesome in caps. Oh, well, thanks, Robert. Well, I, I appreciate that. It was my birthday last week, so that I'll take that as a birthday gift. <laughs> All right, so next is money, money, money. So here's some basics for you guys. The next three things are basics if you're gonna run a successful travel agency. The next, the next one, number 15, is a having a profitability plan and setting goals and holding yourself accountable to those goals. Now, um, on our previous webinar, uh, and again, we I don't have it as a resource at the end of this, I just realized, but on a previous webinar that we did here with Travel Professional News, we have the, I think it was called Post COVID, because I won't say it, uh, Profitability Plan webinar, and um, it'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to put together a profitability plan and setting goals. But even if all you do is set a goal, it doesn't even have to be a sales goal. It could be a prospecting goal. It could be um, a goal for social media. 
set some goals. All business owners uh, set goals and hold themselves accountable to it. So um, that's a business foundation and just a great habit to get into is to set those goals. Number 16, find a way to accept payments. Now, um, if you're your own travel agency and you have your own um, merchant account, then just make sure you've got a great way to accept those payments from your clients. But most of the advisors I know are smart and they've partnered with a host agency that it actually uh, takes payments or the uh, travel partner takes those payments for you through their merchant account. But what I mean by here is accepting payments is, do you have a credit card authorization form, an online one through DocuSign that allows you to accept payments, to accept that credit card information securely? Really important that you have a process of how you make that work and um, that you have a form um, or some sort of secure method to accept those payments. And I guess I should say accept credit cards, but that's a payment. If you're doing a group, if you're put together a group, what is the process and the flow for accepting those payments where your clients are gonna feel secure because their information is secure and that you are organized with it because there's payments that are happening left and right. You gotta be organized with that. Number 17 is tracking your money. Um, how are you tracking the monies that are coming in and the monies that are going out? And what I mean by that is, again, kind of back to the bookkeeper, but also QuickBooks. Um, what type of technology are you using? I know there's a lot of uh, technologies out there that will help you uh, set a budget for yourself, uh, expense tracking uh, programs, um, but how are you tracking your money? So number 15 is profitability, having a plan in place that will help you be profitable every year, as well as goals that will keep you on track. Number 16 is a process, a strong process uh, in place for accepting payments from your clients, and 17 is tracking your money. We're almost done. Can you I believe know. it? They're, they're taking notes, they say. I can tell. I can tell. All right. I'm, cur I'm going to be curious to see how many people um, have these things in place. Even if you guys are writing it down, we're gonna, I want you to go through and do a check mark. All right. Then the last three are setting yourself up for a business for a lifetime. Number 18, it is an absolute must that you have a CRM technology helping you manage your customer's relationship, your relationship with your customer. Um, otherwise, it is just a bunch of one-offs. Otherwise, all you are is an order taker. And quite frankly, um, you wouldn't be listening to this webinar if you wanted to be an order taker. You're listening to this webinar because you want the foundation of your agency to be solid. So customer relationship management technology is paramount. Um, and it's not just a fancy Rolodex, guys. This is a place for you to be able to tag your clients. At TPI, we have our own CRM that's built into our um, fees, and they have these things called tags. So our, our advisors are able to, and I'm sure all CRMs have this, by the way, um, to be able to say, as I'm talking to Jane on the phone, and I'm, I'm advising her, and I'm thinking of her three to five year vacation plans or adventure plans, and she's mentioning to me she'd love to go to uh, Japan one day, she'd love to go on a river cruise one day, you know, she's always wanted to pet a cheetah, whatever it is, you know, a customer relationship management tool allows you to tag um, that client, tag Jane, so when you have a river cruise opportunity that's coming up, you can pull all the clients out of your CRM that says, yes, I'm interested in a river cruise, and send a segmented email to them, an actual personalized message to them, saying, I know you said you're interested in river cruises. Here's one that I was thinking of. How cool would it be if it was a, I don't think Japan has river cruises, but let's just say it's a river cruise where you can pet a Cheeto. I, I'm probably combining wrong travel types, but you guys know what I mean. Maybe it's a, you know, they love wine and they want to go on a river cruise. And now you just found a river cruise that focuses on wine um, going through the Bordeaux region. Now you can segment your clients. This is how you make, this is how you gain loyalty. When you're thinking for your clients on their behalf, and a CRM technology is key, key, key in uh, making that happen, um, and of so many other things that you can do in your CRM. I'm also going to say itinerary builders. It's not on here, but itinerary builders, other types of technologies. That's how you build a business for a lifetime. That's how you have a customer for a lifetime. The next is having a process and workflow manual. Yep. 
you got to be a business owner. You might hire somebody along the way. Hiring is in quotes. Maybe you hire an assistant. Maybe, and that's somebody that you pay on a 1099. Um, or maybe you hire an employee. Or maybe you bring on an associate. Or if you're getting up there and you're building a business for a lifetime, something that you might want to sell one day, that is part of your asset bank. When you sell a business uh, like a travel agency, what they're buying are these technologies, these processes, uh, the books, the, um, the tracking capabilities, the trends, all these things. If you start early on in life, early on in your agency, or at least catch up <laughs> in some cases, once you catch up, now you actually have a viable business that you can sell to somebody or that you can hand over to somebody because you are a business at this point. So most businesses, if you think about it, when you were a kid and you went to go work somewhere, they had like an HR handbook, they had a workflow or a process manual, they had some sort of here's how you do your job, workflow and process in place for you to step right into your job. So why not have that for your travel agency? Are we going to and number then, 20? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then finally, I'm just trying to breathe in between all my sentences, Jenny, because I get so excited. So number 20 is a succession plan. What the heck do you want your business to be when it grows up? What are you building this business for? Are you building this business to sell? Are you building this business to hand down? Are you building this business and you want to make an empire within your own agency? Do you want to buy other agencies? Do you want to just build the business and then retire one day, which that would just blow my mind because that means you're just going to close the doors and ignore all your customers and you really didn't care about them to begin with. But what is your succession plan? What is the plan the next three to five years? Because everything that you do right now, and that's why I'm obsessed with these 20 basic things in building a business, all these things right now, if you put them all into place, you've got freedom. You've got, the be, you've got the ability to be able to do all of those things, sell or buy businesses. Do you want to open up a brick and mortar one day? Are you interested in doing a true retail? Are you wanting to partner with another business that's kind of like-minded? Maybe you love uh, weddings and you know honeymoons, um, and now you want to partner with a wedding planner. Well, you can't just call you know Julie, the wedding planner, and go, hey, let's partner, let's collaborate. Yeah, you could. If you come with a business plan, here's how I think we can build our businesses together and you have all these other things in place, trust me, uh, Julie's going to take you seriously. So those are the 20 basics to building a business. And actually, I'm going to go back from the very beginning and just go through in case you missed it. Yeah, I have them. somebody that wanted to ask you if you could go back to um, a couple things. One of them was, can you reiterate on the difference of an LLC? Uh, DBA. So that's one thing they wanted to kind of talk about. Mm -hmm. And another one was, could you go back to the slide with the accountant? So you're going to do that. So I won't, we'll yep. deal with that. And mm -hmm. okay. So that's it for right now. Okay, good. So um, I am not an accountant, um, nor do I play one on TV. And I certainly don't stay in a Holiday Inn Express. So you need to get with an accountant about that. DBA is doing business as, so that's, uh, I think a lot of people, and please don't quote me on this, I think a lot of people open their business under their, and they get paid under their social security number and they, they set themselves up as doing business as, that's what a DBA is. An LLC actually protects you. You're setting yourself up as a limited liability corporation and that protects you. So in other words, a customer couldn't sue you as an individual and come after your personal bank account. They would sue the business. When you're doing something as a, B, a DBA, they could sue you and all the assets that you have uh, personally. Um, and then an S corp, um, or a sole, an S corp is like, um, I, I, probably none of you guys need to be an S corp. I would say an LLC, uh, would probably be the best, but get with your accountants because it really all depends on your own personal financial structure and how you set things up with your accountant. So the first thing is set up a business structure. Get yourself a business license, people. You'll get that little thing. You'll hang it on the wall. You remember you're a business. You'll have, you'll be in directories. The chamber is going to know about you. Everyone's going to know about you. And all of a sudden, people are going to oh, there's a travel agency that just opened up in Lake Mary, Florida. Third is get your own ENO or liability insurance. Fourth is open a business bank account and do not commingle your personal and um, business monies. Fifth is join ASA and or CLIA. 
branding basics, get a web domain, buy a web domain, dot com, dot travel, ideally dot com, um, get a professional email address and you're welcome to have multiple ones, but let's get out of Yahoo and Hotmail and sexy pants one, two, three, four, and your ad, you know, your date of birth. I, the number of horrible emails that I received just drive me crazy. Number eight, consistent brand messaging. Give yourself a brand check every three to four months to make sure if you've changed something in one area, it's changed in all. Know your customer, continue to refine and know your customer. Pay attention to your customers. Understand who you love doing business with, who you seem to serve better than anybody else, who you can just jump out of bed and get excited about. Know your customer. Then some professional services, an attorney resource. And again, you could have that through ASA accountant and bookkeeper and then somebody had a question about that what well, i'm not sure what their specific um, question is they just wanted you to go back to that slide and i'm going to see if i can read that question again because they kind of go away hold on can you ask that question again if you're listening still <laughs> you wanted to go back to the accountant page and i can't remember exactly why maybe she was just writing it down maybe that was yeah. what it was i think that's all she was getting at okay yeah and if anybody wants a copy of this powerpoint just email me and i'll give you my email address at the end and i'm happy to send it to you um then the next is covering your assets have a strong terms and conditions put into place um as well as your hit by a bus plan and again it doesn't have to be that you actually get hit by a bus, but you got to have a plan, people. Things happen, unfortunately, and you want your business to continue to run without you if necessary. An associate and third-party agreements, um, make sure you have those things in writing. Then money, 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 a profitability plan, and there is a webinar that we dive deep into that, and it does include a worksheet, setting goals, as well as accepting payments, having a process and a flow to accept payments from your clients. Uh, tracking your money, which is more like QuickBooks and any expense um, apps that are out there, and then setting up for a business of a lifetime, CRM technology, itinerary uh, technologies, anything that's uh, dealing with uh, workflows and processes, put that in a manual of some sort. Have a process in place that you would be able to quickly be able to hand over to somebody else if necessary. And then number 20, what the heck are you doing with your business later on? What is your succession plan? Perfect. Okay, so I have, um, oh, and these are all your resources. So before you do that, I just want to mm -hmm. mention, you mentioned that other webinar. So I, everybody, I just sent a, a chat um, to everybody on, on the webinar letting you know, we do record these webinars and all of them are at are on our website at travelprofessionalnews.com in the recorded webinar area. So if you, need, if you need to go back and listen to this one again or wanna to listen to any more of Jen's webinars or any of the other webinars in there, simply go to that site and then you'll find it there. I just want to make sure everybody knew that. Excellent, excellent. And guys, here's all, here's, I always like to end as often as possible my webinars with cool resources that I've uh, uncovered. Some of them you may have heard before, others you might not have. Um, I've given you the ASTA website, it's asta.org. And if you listen to Vicki Freed's uh, Coffee Chat now, if you're listening to this outside of the September 4th, September of 2021, uh, this is no longer valid, but Vicki Freed and Royal Caribbean is giving you, anyone who joins or renews their ASTA membership, a free cruise. Um, they just added another thousand to that. So um, ASTA.org or CLIA is cruising.org. And then the ne next two are cool uh, companies that I've just discovered. Um, actually, one I've known for a little bit, uh, Travel Agent Mastermind. That's TA salesmastermind.com. Uh, they shared with me today that they're actually going to do a deep dive into these 20. And now they might have others besides this, but they're going to be doing a deep dive in their mastermind group about this. So I'm kind of curious. Um, you should check out their website and maybe sign up with their email to see what they mean by that. The podcast that I was telling you about is Masters in Travel Podcast. Um, and there is one episode that was just released uh, where it's myself um, and uh, two others, Whitney who is the um, owner of Masters in Travel, as well as Kareen Johnson, another uh, advisor. We dive a little bit more into the 220 things, and they have a couple of other things that I don't have here. And then third is a Fiercely Forward Facebook page. It's open to everybody. Um, it's just a Facebook page for all the positive travel advisors out there. It's not to talk about anything but, you know, kind of, you know, what do you, what's happening in your business right now? We don't ask questions about where to travel. It's not a place to, you know, complain about anything. It's more about, you know, just a, a, a community of people who are moving fiercely forward, who 
through all this craziness. Um, so feel free to join that Fiercely Forward Travel. Um, and then the next two, uh, you've heard me say a thousand times, Building a Story Brand by Don Miller. Great resource for helping you with your messaging, how to really speak to customers, how to get your message across in a clear, concise way where it makes sense to your clients. So I just think it's a great resource for everyone. And then I just discovered this uh, by Park Howell. That's a gentleman's name. I just listened to this podcast and he's got a process called and, but, and therefore. And I'm not going to give you much more information on it, but I will tell you if you want to um, persuade someone to do something, say it in this way and, but, and therefore. And there is a great podcast that I listened to on social media examiner um, that kind of breaks that down. It's kind of like you identify the problem. So it's kind of like, you know how uh, you struggle with your weight, but you don't want to uh, work out 14 times a day? There, you know, we are offering a magic pill that'll help you lose 50 pounds in one day. So it's and, but, and therefore. And once you get these through this three process, three prong process down, uh, you will see that it's used on you at all times. And so you might as well use it as a resource for yourself. So those cool. are my resources. This, this awesome. Time. Okay, I have a couple of things I just want to share with you, and then we'll go ahead and do the questions. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody just wanted to say, say that they had 18 out of the 20. Okay. So Ooh, that's no great. Problem. And then Robert said he has 14 out of the 20, and he's with TPI. So those are just two of the people that shared their shared their puzzle pieces and how they're doing awesome. with their puzzles. So thank you guys for sharing that. Um, we have a couple um, questions that we're going to ask because mm -hmm. we're going to do the prize. Um, and we have two prizes, which are consultations with Jen, which is awesome. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to ask you all to do is put the answer um, that sh to the question in the chat area. I'm going to take the fifth correct answer as they come in front of me. Oh, and somebody else says they have 16 pieces. So <laughs> I want to thank you guys. Congratulations. <laughs> I love I these over Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and ask the first question. And then remember, everybody, just put in the chat box there your answer. And I will take the fifth one. And then we'll do question number two. And we'll be ready to close this down pretty soon. OK, ready for this first one. Where, What are the two associations that you should join? If they don't get this, I'm telling you. OK. We have the winner for that one, and the winner mm -hmm. for that is Vicki Edwards, and the answer is asked to Ann Clea. Vicki, congratulations. You were number hey, five. Vicky. Yep, very awesome. well done. All right, so here comes the next one. Hold on, I got to get rid of these because there's so many people that got that. Okay, and, she, good, and Vicki good, says good, yay. Good. So just one second. Yay. Clean my screen. Lord, you guys are responsive. This is awesome. <laughs> Give me I a love lot it. Of work to do here. Okay. All right, I think we're ready. All right, what plan should you have in your business that will help you sleep better at night? <laughs> a lot of them are really good answers, but they're not the exact one yet. I mean, there have been a couple, but I'm <laughs> waiting for number five. Okay, Randy, Randy, you have won. It is hit by Woo! a bus. Woohoo! Okay. Or stung by a bee. One of the two. <laughs> One of the two. Randy, Randy congratulations. Um, we will be sending uh, to the winners, we will be sending your name and your email address to Jen. And so she can, you guys can follow up with them, Jen, um, as to setting up the consultations. Yeah, but it's a absolutely. heck of a thing that you're getting. As you can see by the way Jen manages this webinar, you can see that you're going to, it's a valuable, valuable tool to have some time with her one-on-one. -on -one. So we appreciate and her doing, doing that, you know, for everyone that's, you know, on our webinars offering. That is a wonderful prize. So absolutely. I think we're good. Jen, are you good? Anything else you want to close with? Um, you know, guys, I know uh, we're going through another version of a weird thing that we're going through. Just keep moving fiercely forward. Um, do not give up. Do not let off the gas. I will promise you we're going to get over this hump very quickly, but it's in your hands. It is how you present yourself. It's how you perceive yourself that will dictate how others perceive you. And, um, you know, that throwaway word value uh, doesn't mean anything. You show your value by setting yourself up as a business owner, by treating it as a business. And I hope these 20 uh, foundational pieces help you do that and you can fill in the gaps and, you know, keep moving fiercely forward. 
Love it. And I my my thought to that is just to add, folks, things are getting a little weird. But as Jen said, they they'll, it'll, they'll come around. Things will come around again. Um, this has been, you know, interesting. Needless to say, it's a little <laughs> bit of a little bit of a roller coaster ride these last few years. But my my suggestion is stay positive because people sense positivity. And uh, if you're not positive about what you're doing and feeling good about our industry, someone's going to sense that. So stay positive if you can and know that uh, we're all in this together. Absolutely. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for being here. Jen, thank you so much. Um, oh great God. webinar, and I hope everybody enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one and look forward to it. Have a great afternoon, folks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.